This is Public Resource. TDM Today Show starring Roger Magulis and our special guest, Dr. Gita Yadav. Roger, Gita, welcome to the show. Over to you, Roger. Great. Uh, welcome, everyone. And Gita, I know you've developed an essential oils database of plants. Can you tell us what that is and a little about it? Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Carl. So you're right, Roger, we've developed the essential oil database. It is it was basically an attempt to capture the, the variability in the chemical code of plants that I was telling you about earlier. And the variability in chemistry is not just uh, in, in the structure of the emitted compounds, but also in their function. And uh, it is evident within and between species, within and between individuals, tissues, plant parts, developmental stages, even geographical regions. And so the essential oil database is an open source repository with, with a little over 150,000 records of plant emission profiles. It's got about 8,000 compounds from 2,000 different species of plants, the, the compounds that have been emitted by these species. And uh, the greatest advantage, advantage of the essential oil database is that it also contains contextual information about the emissions, such as time and uh, source of collection of the data, the geographical location, as I told you, the prevailing conditions, stress or disease, um, and so on. But one of the downsides, I would say, of the essential oil database is that it merely represents or captures a tiny minuscule fraction of all the chemistry that we could potentially find out there in the, in the, in the full scholarly corpus you know, of published data, if only we had greater access. So how did you go about compiling that information? Um, so for the essential oil database, it took us years and years of sorting through and reading, manually reading thousands of published scientific articles. And these were all, of course, open source articles, as well as a few that were, that were uh, subscribed to by my organization and even my colleagues and friends' organizations in India, because we were going to just about everybody to get papers that we could access. There were times when I had to walk into one of the uh, institutes where it, it was, it was air-gapped and we couldn't uh, get the data back in, in slides or pen drives. So I had to take a notebook and pencil and copy down all of the emissions that were released by certain plants and then come back to my office and then we built uh, the soft copies of this data and then we uploaded it into the essential oil database. It took us over 12, almost 12 years to put the database together with people working full time all the time throughout the year, you know. So, so that was how it was done because see, there's no way you can actually go out and do the experiment and capture the headspace volatiles of plants. We can do that for one species to maybe many more, but there's just no way you or I or any one person could actually find out what to what extent these chemicals exist out there. And the only way to do that is therefore systematically extract information which is already existing in literature. And that's what essential oil database. That sounds like quite, quite a bonus for the world. Was, was there any like kind of uh, like guidance on what plants, given that you can only get a small fraction, even though you've got thousands, uh, like, was there some kind of science or medicine or something that, that focused uh, some of your efforts? So, so I have to be frank here, uh, beggars cannot be choosers. Once we decided that we were going to try and capture all of the variability that we could, we went for what was published and what we could find in the open source literature. And we, what we did find in the open source literature was mostly model plants or the most important crops or horticulturally or agriculturally important uh, species. It was not usually possible to go for your favorite species or the species which we know would be emitting far more compounds than let's say the model plant Arabidopsis thaliana. But Truly, you've got, you're, you're generally constrained by what is out there in the published literature. Even so, we were further constrained because we only had access to the open source published literature, right? So, yeah. 
So Gita, I had a question for you. Um, you did this manual search in order to compile your essential oils database, but you gave Roger a list of plant names and he threw it into his table of unigrams. Did that give you more results? Thank you, uh, Carl, for asking that, because first of all, it was your scholarly corpus that has given me the ray of light, ray of hope to believe that we can actually have access to more than what is what we had over the 10 years that we kept searching for the essential oil data, data for the database. Uh, with your corpus of 73 million papers, we can now, uh, as Roger has done, uh, we can now hope to have code that can that can crawl over this, one, this, this entire corpus. And when I gave the species to Roger, I had not I had not anticipated that so soon you would be able to give us back something, but your code, uh, your code, Roger, it, it truly pulled out insights without, you know, without actually reading the papers and became very useful for us because one of my students at Cambridge, now she was searching for species which she would be able to work on for her research project. In general, when we go for species, we ask the same questions, which are the most important species, um, you know, economically, medically, pharmaceutically, and so on. But what is the more important question to ask is, because this is a knowledge-based science and knowledge-based research, which are the species that have enough data out there? And we don't know that because we don't have access to that data. So with your Unigram search, Roger, you were able to give back your preliminary results alone were able to tell us which are the top five species with the maximum number of documents available out there in the published literature. And based on that, Jamila Roland Chandler, she was able to pick up the top four species and she completed her research project and will be writing her thesis next month. And this has only been possible because we got the preliminary data from you back then. So I... You know, I, I, it, when I start to think about when your final data will come out to us, not just the Unigram data, I, I, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to hold on and wait for it. So, Gita, in, in get, doing this research, is there? Do you expect a focus to come out of this in medicine and agriculture? What do you hope the final outcome will be? Not final outcome, but the general direction will be. Thank you, Roger. Um, so. I believe that the outcome is going to be both in medicine, pharmaceuticals, as well as in agriculture. So you see billions of tons of, of volatile organic compounds are being emitted annually by the plant kingdom together on the planet. And these, these are mediating specialized adaptations, like I told you earlier, in defense and communication. So the compounds that are being released these, these billions of tons of compounds, these terpenes, they have many industrial uses. They are used as biofuels, as, as feedstock, as fragrance and flavor in the, in, in, in the, in, in the, in the uh, industry, as well as in medicinal chemistry. So you can well imagine that if we have any mechanism of unpacking this, this chemical code of plants or the variable chemistry of plants, uh, we would have access to, to this you know, to, to the, the, the questions like when does a plant particularly produce which chemical and which part of the world? So what kind of chemical are you interested in or is the industry or humankind interested in? And where would be able to synthesize more of that? And who synthesizes that right now? And how we might be able to, uh, to, 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 to be able to uh, do it synthetically in the lab? Many other questions would, you know, all of these would, be, would, be, would become answerable if we are in a position to, like I said, unpack these chemical arsenals. You mentioned that you're hoping to ex expand the, uh, the database. What kind of rate of expansion are you hoping for? Oh, well, so if I just go by my facts, I know that Carl has got a corpus of 73 million papers out of which, now these are scientific articles, and I'm assuming that all of the literature that has ever been published about plant chemistry or plant emissions is there in that corpus. And what we have got, you know, over 10 years, the 150,000 records that we collected painstakingly were taken from a total of 3,222 articles. So you can well imagine if we've got a huge amount of data from 3,200 articles, what even a fraction of Carl's 73 million would do to my research is, is beyond, beyond description right now. I, I can't speak about rate. It's going to be mind boggling. 
So Roger, to, to answer your question about how useful these chemicals would be, not just for research, you know, the question, the kind of questions that we are asking of, of plants and of chemistry would help us, as I said, to unpack chemical arsenals of plants. And it's not just about uh, pushing and merging the boundaries of modern technology, but it's also about being able to understand and appreciate how the silent language of plants is pivotal to human well-being. Well, thanks again, Gita. This has been the TDM Today Show, starring Gita and Roger. Thank you so much for being with us. Our work at Public Resource is made possible by a generous grant from Arcadia. Arcadia, a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin. Additional support provided by contributions from citizens like you. Thank you for your support. Public Resource is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation with headquarters in the state of California and dedicated to the principle that access to knowledge is a human right.